Hi there, welcome to another Project Tech Video of the Week. In today's project video demonstration, we will be designing a piezoelectric generator that can generate electricity using footsteps pressure applied on this design. As seen here, the project would support a storage rechargeable battery that would be recharged using the power generated by the piezoelectric generator output. The project design would also have a DC-based charging station that can be used to charge mobile devices. Stay tuned and let's get right into it. Please don't forget to like this, subscribe and hit the notification button if you like this video. This is the circuit diagram. A better view is found in the description link below. We used some piezoelectric transducers as pressure to electric conversion sensors. These sensors were both connected in series and parallel connections. The reason is to maximize the output voltage. Also, from experimentation, the drawback of using only a series connection, is that once a PZT sensor is damaged or broken, the rest of the sensors that produce AC power cannot supply because the chain of distribution is broken. Testing the configuration, the combination of the parallel and series connection. We can see on the multimeter for alternating current, AC, voltage that enough voltage is generated by the pressure of each footstep. However, this is only an AC form and needs to be rectified according to the schematic diagram. This involved the use of a bridge rectifier and a filtration capacitor of apt rating. Assembling the components according to the circuit diagram. We use the piezoelectric transducer, PZT, for the generation of the electric power due to pressure action. We used as many as these transducers as possible. Each PZT sensor comes with two power wires. The connection is done according to the schematic diagram. Full explanatory details are provided in the website link below. The water bottle caps are needed to provide a rebound any time the PZT sensors are stepped on. We glued the PZT sensors onto the water bottle caps and ensure the wires are bare visible for connection. The new individual generators are placed onto a plywood board and held in place with hot melted glue sticks. This was done as neatly and as fast as possible. Bigger glue sticks are used to create a height difference between the piezo sensors and the pressure of the footsteps. Right connections were made by soldering the correct wire polarities together according to the circuit diagram. Please use the links in the description to understand it better.
Next, is the DC charging port. The charging port USB was glued to the side of the 3 by 6 inches plastic casing. This was made by creating an opening at the side bottom case. This is hot glued using a glue gun. And the power wires of the USB port are brought out to be connected to the regulated 5 volts output. Also, visit the link in the description section to understand this connection better. A red SPDT switch was added here in practice to isolate the power when the project was not being used. This would make the design useful in conserving power during the idle state. The red switch has two terminals and it is connected to the battery output source. Visit the circuit diagram in the link below to understand the usefulness of this component and its connection. The USB port was connected to the regulated output of the DC-DC buck converter on the circuitry. The soldered bearboard with its parts was neatly as placed into the casing as shown here. Also, as shown here, we used a big 10 kilo ohms potentiometer to adjust the contrast of the LCD. To ensure the design can still be programmed while in use, the programming port for the Arduino nano board was cut out on the side of the casing. This would ensure further programming calibrations that needed to be done. The Arduino Nano was placed henceforth on the female header rails soldered on their Vera board. And it was ensured that the programming port was visible from the rear. Having an opening that was not too tight or too loose to attach a programming cable and upload a program sketch to it. The DC-DC buck converter output pins were connected to source 5 volts to the MCU and the USB charging port. converter was placed and glued by the side of the casing. The output of the switch was connected to the VCC of the buck converter. And a shrink tube was used to isolate the connected joint from forming a short in the design. was applied to make the shrink tube hold onto the wires firmly. An indicator LED was used to know when power was ready to charge a device. When this was done, we did some tidying up. 
using the shrink tubes and cable ties. The method was to ensure there was uniformity and the wires not tangling up in the whole enclosure. The generated power from the piezo generator was introduced into the circuit for rectification through two wire rails. This had wire sockets to make it easier to connect the output of the piezo generator to the rectifier circuitry. Also, the battery had to be recharged by the piezo rectified output, this had a separate power wire header. Since we were displaying the voltage generated and the battery level voltage, the cover of the casing was cut open to contain the LCD screen. This was a 16 by 4 green color type LCD. The 10K potentiometer for the LCD contrast adjustment was attached to this cover. The LED charging indicator 2 was placed at a position not far from the potentiometer knob. The glue gun was used to put some glue ensuring a firm hold between the soldered board and the base of the casing. Next. The LCD screen was attached at the opening for the LCD on the top casing. The LCD wire connector was plugged into its female header and ensured a tight fit was done. The use of shrink tubes were needed to separate the LCD wire from the rest of the wires in the design. Also to give the wiring a good aesthetic feel. The glue gun was used again to apply glue to the top right where the LCD was attached, making it not susceptible to falling out when the design was displaced in an upside down orientation. The potentiometer cap was placed on the pot resistor making it easier to have the contrast controlled by the user. After this, the screws were attached to safely enclose the casing. The battery was placed at the back of the 3 by 6 inches casing and connected via the battery power rail. The battery power rail has two wires from which these can be connected. We turn on the design and test it for display functionality. Testing the generated output of the piezo electric generator, we can see the maximum output of more than 35 volts AC. Hmm. Testing the piezo generator on the design, 
we can see the rectified generated DC output on the LCD screen. To test the charging port of the design, we connected a USB charging cable to it and connected a phone.